Bitcoin is a very interesting uncorrelated digital asset with high volatility, with high potential returns, and you can put one to two percent of your portfolio into it with or without mm -hmm. leverage. I didn't pay much attention to the crypto industry until March of, of this year. And in March of this year, we had a K-shaped recovery. So I think that the major macroeconomic event is, is the expansion of the M2 money supply. We, were, we had an, a money supply expanding by about 5.5% a year for a decade. Mm -hmm. And starting this year, it leaped forward by about 24%. And looking forward, it looks like it's going to expand by 15% every year for the next five years. So another way to say that is the cost of capital just tripled. And if you're not beating the expansion of the money supply with your returns and investment, you can't preserve wealth. You can't store value. So when the cost of capital tripled, what that meant was a bond that's not yielding more than 15% is losing value. And it meant that a stock that's not growing its EPS faster than 15% annually is losing value. Mm -hmm. And it meant that real estate that can't grow its rents by faster than 15% is losing value. So the short of it is, there's $300 trillion of, of money in, the, in these in fiat investments. They're all going to be cut in half over the next three to five years. They're, they're all, in essence, everyone's going to lose half their wealth mm -hmm. if they don't find a solution to the problem. So why am I interested in Bitcoin and the crypto industry in general? It's because there's a mad scramble to find a store of value. We know that cash won't work. And we know that bonds, real estate, and stock are fiat instruments, and they're all going to be debased at the rate of expansion of the money supply. And so what are you going to do? You, you, you search through gold, you consider silver, you consider commodities, you consider buying a portfolio of rare art, and eventually you settle upon the idea of perfectly engineered digital gold something that is superior to gold in all respects, not none of the liabilities of gold, all of the good attributes of gold, and that's 21 million gold coins called Bitcoin sitting in cyberspace, <laughs> right? And so once, once you found that, you think, well, this is the ultimate safe haven asset and store of value for every investor on earth. And by the way, it's the solution to 7.8 billion people's problem on earth because everybody on the planet has a currency that's collapsing. The only difference is in America and Europe, it's collapsing at 10 to 15% a year and everywhere else it's collapsing faster. Yeah. So how can you not get enthusiastic about that? I, I think that March of this year was the inflection point. Mm -hmm. If you had asked me, what did I think about Bitcoin and what our treasury invest in Bitcoin in February? I would have said, what is Bitcoin? Or I think I read about it, but I'm not paying attention to it. And if I'd walked into my boardroom and said we should do it, they would have thought I'd gone crazy. And, uh, and I, by the way, I didn't know about it. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have been allowed to do it. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had a good reason to do it. And then I think in March, we kind of got hit in the head with a two by four. It was a wake up call. And, and again, the, the rate of, of uh, asset inflation tripled or quadrupled or quintupled. And so you could all of a sudden the entire industry shifted. Every rational investor in the world today knows inflation is coming. They know there's a problem. So starting in April, people had a problem. It was three times as intense as it was in February. Mm -hmm. All the media started covering it and all of the other solutions to the problem started to look like they're not working again. So if you, if you think about how fast an institutions move, you know, it takes if you're if you're wicked fast in three months, you're working on it in six months, you've done something. And otherwise, it's quarter by quarter by quarter. And so I think I think, you know, we did it. You saw Square do it. And um, there's been a parade of 100 institutional positive milestones that happened since March. And each one of those is is building a tapestry of momentum. And, uh, and it's making it easier for the next company. I think it's a no brainer that private companies, I see a lot of private companies working on it, but mm -hmm. I also hear institutions, pension funds and unions and endowments and things like that are starting to move. And, uh, and I, 
I also think public companies will do it. I think I think the hardest the hardest hurdle is for public companies to do it because there's there's interlocking regulatory and governance and accounting and and strategic issues and communications issues which are which are really tricky to work through. But I think that uh, you know the hedge funds, the Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmill, Bill Miller, all of those they can move faster and they typically want to front run the bigger players and then you have the lumbering institutions and mm -hmm. of course the private companies and high net worth individuals and family offices they're uh they've got the same problem and uh they can move faster and they don't they don't have to put out a press release saying what they did and why they did it and justify it bitcoin is a very interesting uncorrelated digital asset with high volatility with high potential returns and you can put one to two percent of your portfolio into it with or without mm -hmm. leverage but that's one that that was a narrative, you know, and the speculative narrative uh, was predominant before March. But that's not the that's not going to appeal to ninety nine percent of the investors or the money in the world. They want something different. They want Bitcoin is the ultimate synthetic long term treasury reserve asset. It's it's an engineered safe haven asset, to, engineered to be superior to gold in all aspects. A, a bearer instrument that's a store of value. And if I go from one to the other, uh, then I'm not talking about getting 1% of the money from 1% of the investors. I'm talking about getting 50% of the money from 100% of the investors. Okay, so, so uh, what does that mean? Well, I mean, it means that the people that we want to, we, we want to appeal to are the people that put their money in gold because they don't trust fiat instruments. So there's $10 trillion there. So they'll be looking at, you know, how does Bitcoin compare to gold? How does Bitcoin's volatility compare to gold returns compared to gold trading liquidity compared to gold, et cetera. How many people hold Bitcoin versus people that hold gold? I think uh, the second big, uh, by the way, and that's $10 trillion, right? So that gets you a factor of, 20 to 50 there the second bucket is people with uh with bonds 17 trillion dollars of negative yielding debt a hundred trillion dollars of zero to three percent yielding debt what why are you putting money in bonds sovereign wealth it's a safe haven so people's reaction is the market gets scary they run to a safe haven